Well, this is fantastic growing weather. It's warm and it's wet. And then it's warm again and then it's wet again. And it's not just the vegetables that are growing. That's the challenge. And to be honest, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. Let me show you. So I'm resisting cutting the grass and it's a bit wet, but all the edges, in fact, the middle as well, is just totally overwhelmed with weeds. And well, this week it's gotta be done. The edge of the path, just stinging nettles and thistles and groundsel and well, the raspberries. I really don't think I'm gonna to get to doing anything with that other than picking the raspberries, of course. And they're just starting to come, which is lovely. Let's have a taste. Mmm, delish. Well, the gooseberries, I'm gonna crop them. So, I know I've got loads of grass over the top here, but even these ones that were completely wrecked by the sawfly, I think I'm going to get those into a pot and use them. And these are looking pretty good. And um, the colours turning on these, which is fabulous. That's looking gorgeous. So there are plenty of gooseberries. I think I might just taste this one. Mm. A bit crunchy, but sweet. Gorgeous. There's a load in there and a load on here. So I think it's gonna be gooseberry full in the next couple of days. There's weeds growing out of the rhubarb and weeds all along this path. Just overwhelming. So many. I'm gonna need a real concentrated effort on getting rid of all this extra unwanted growth. Oh, look at the end of this path. It's just going for it. And over the top of my cold frame, plenty of pruning to do. I did this just a little while back. Not too bad, but not great. And my onions have got some more bindweed growing up them. That's going to have to come out. And general weeds around the beds, oh, they're just few and far between, but those that survived are taking hold again. So I need to get them out. Ooh, quick look at the parsnips. They seem to be coming on very nicely. And onto the courgettes. And I had some feedback that these courgettes might get damaged by these collars. And I think that's absolutely right. I'm just hoping that there's not gonna be any strong winds that cause them to sway back and forward. But I'm gonna stick with these now. I mean, the alternative is to pull that collar out over the top of the leaves. And to be honest, that looks quite difficult. I suppose I could try with a couple of them and just use them as a comparison, really. Let's just have a quick look at this one. Looks like it's gonna come up fairly easily. Yeah, it does lean over straight away, which is characteristic of courgettes, but perhaps I'll just leave that one as a comparison and see how we go. A few weeds in there as well. Well, what to do first? The other job that's really playing on me is the strawberries. Now we've had the best of the strawberries, that's for sure. And well, the strawberry hanging baskets are past their best. Some of the leaves dying back and what needs to happen with these is I need to take them down because I said that I needed the space for the tomatoes to grow and they're just getting to the bottom of these hanging baskets. So now's a good time. And then I need to take these plants out of the baskets because they're first year strawberry plants. 
and pop them up into, well, some big crates or trays, something that's got a bit of depth to it. And then over the winter, they'll just carry on growing. And next year, I think we'll have an even better crop because they certainly flower and fruit far, far better in the second year. There was an awful lot of feedback about peat, or at least peat-free compost, because I was really struggling with this Lidl's peat-free compost. And I ended up putting some normal compost on top because I was worried that these seedlings weren't going to make it. And what I found is that these turnips seem to be doing okay. You can see there's a full lot of cells. But these swede are really struggling and I'm beginning to think that my swede seed is just a bit past its best. It looks like we're going to get, I don't know, perhaps five plants out of there, which will be fine for just stocking up a few extra swede. And then this is the purple sprouting broccoli and that's looking fabulous. So I'm really pleased about that. We'll carry on potting that on getting some good sized plants and hopefully put them into the plot by the end of July. Well, the lettuce is bolting big time and that's fine. We're going to take a few more heads out of here um, and eat them because they're fine. And then gradually the chickens will get more and more lettuce as the weeks go on. So they'll be pleased. We've enjoyed these, all these sort of smaller lettuce. If you're wondering what this contraption is over my carrots, well, we had an awful lot of disturbance from cats. Even though I barricade the front of the polytunnel, they still seem to get in. And I think it's three occasions now I've had them in this, well, carrot trough. And unfortunately, they do some damage and therefore I felt like I had no choice other than to just cover this up a bit. And it has enabled them to get more established and got some really good growth on there. There's actually no carrot stations that are empty now, but um, they did take a bit of a hit. So there we are. That's some of the challenges on this plot. But I should soon be able to take this off and just allow them to grow on as that foliage gets more and more dense. If a cat does get in, then it won't go into this particular trough, I don't think. This tomato called Lata is such an interesting tomato. There's hardly any foliage on it, and it's a it's almost a dwarf tomato, certainly low growing. And well, there's just tons of tomatoes on this one. And good amount on that one, not so much this. But it just shows. A tomato that's low growing, I could have that in a different position in the polytunnel quite successfully and grow the taller ones on another location. So I do think I'm going to grow this again, especially if I can get plants that sort of size. Um, but I probably have that away from there and it really doesn't need these cords. In fact, I might take these cords down whilst this plant's here um, because I just don't think it needs it. And that might enable me to just thin what I've got on this bench a little bit and perhaps bring something down because everything up there is growing so well. Well, I'll talk about being overwhelmed. These flowers here have really suffered from slug damage. There's another fella there. So, I don't know. I think being next to the hedge and, well, me being a bit negligent with all the weeds really doesn't help. And subsequently, the slugs and the snails seem to get in here and really cause some damage. I've got a dahlia flower just about to come out from my seeded dahlia. That's nice to see. And they'll be fine. I just got to work through this area and keep removing the slugs. My sunflowers are really taking a hit, but they're still growing. And I'm hopeful that we'll manage to get some flowers from them. 
as long as they keep the slugs away. Even the paths around the vegetable beds are becoming a little bit overwhelmed by mare's tail. And so there's a bit of work in here. I think I might get that oscillating hoe to work in here. I got a bit of slug damage in amongst the swede. I can see one there having a right old munch. He's coming out. I don't mind picking up slugs. I don't know what it is. Some people don't like them and I understand that, but I don't mind grabbing them. I think it's the feeling that I'm getting some revenge. I noticed on the beans this morning, we got quite a lot of flowers coming, which is nice. And I'm expecting white flowers from the variety I grow, which is Zara. But I've got a red one that's crept in there. And of course I saved my seed, so not surprising really, because I've had a few red beans in the past. So that one's crept in. That'd be interesting to see how it's different. Just look at that cow, fantastic. And I put that extra plant in and it seems to be, well, keeping away from those slugs. And well, I need to just make sure that I check these plants for damage and see what is damaging them. And I think this is slugs. I just need to find them. I'm sure they come over from the grass, but they're doing well. And I think we'll have plenty of cow this season, which is better than last season where it was a bit of a struggle. Well, that's got the strawberries out of the polytunnel. It's looking very different in there. I'll show you in a minute. But I'm gonna leave these here in their baskets and hopefully we'll have a goodly amount of rain and they'll get a good drenching. And that'll enable me to get the plants apart and get them repotted at some point in the future. And they'll go down into the nursery area or what I call the nursery under the shade of that big maple tree. And that will make sure that they get the plenty of shade they need if we get some really hot and dry weather. And that'll keep them conditioning and get them ready for the winter and then onward into the next season. Well, that's looking pretty different in here. I've got all the weeds out of the carrots. Hopefully we won't get any cat damage in there in the next few weeks while it really bushes up. And I've got all this nice clean space now. I'll take down all my hooks and I think I'll be taking down these cords from these tomatoes that don't really need them and then have a bit of a spread out but it already feels a bit more under control and well some lettuce to the chickens today i think and maybe i'll take the tops home so looking good on to the next phase well those potatoes that i took out of those pots on the weekend tasted absolutely fantastic and today i'm gonna have them with some steak and some broad beans, which means I need to pick some broad beans. So let's have a look what's there. And on the way, I'll show you that rose that I've been growing for years that hasn't flowered previously. Just look at that, absolutely beautiful. So this is a climber and I do need to get it onto the fence eventually, but it's doing amazing. Right into the broad beans. Let's see what's in there. So these broad beans were grown in the polytunnel and have been under the nets since I planted them in the interest of keeping black fly off and the cats. And hopefully we've got some reasonable pods in here. Need to tread carefully. Yeah, look at those. They're gonna be nice, sweet broad beans. Let's have a few more. So there's lots of pods to develop in here, but there's also some that are quite mature. There's a slug in there, so I'll get him out. And I'm gonna keep the smaller pods to mature a bit further. And just pick the ones that look reasonably well developed. Let's get in here and see what's in here. 
Okay, so quite a lot of small pods at the moment. And here we are in sort of early July. And they'll come on a bit further. So we'll get a few crops out of these. There's another good one. And another snail. It does like to harbour some pests in here. But that'll be nice with some steak and new potatoes. Well, that just leaves me to say, have a good week. And don't forget, Sunday at two o'clock, with that collaboration with Eli and the other YouTubers. And yes, I did call her Ellie. Sorry, Eli. Anyway, like to see you there, 2 p.m. Good times. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochenbar.